2E4, Lab Practical A, Bending Over Beam. In this laboratory practical, we are going to investigate the effect of bending on a beam. A transverse load will be applied to a simply supported steel eye beam at mid-span. The beam changes shape and deforms as it is subjected to a bending moment. Internal stresses, i.e. bending stresses, develop in the beam, the magnitude of which increase with additional applied force. When subjected to bending, the material on the inside of the bend or curve experiences compression. This occurs on the top part of the beam. Conversely, material on the outside or bottom surface of the beam experiences tension. In pure bending, the transverse planes in the material remain plane and parallel during bending. The beam will be subjected to a loading cycle that is within its elastic range. This means that it will not be subjected to any permanent deformation and will return to its original state upon removal of any applied force. This experiment has four objectives. 1. To measure deflection and the strain at mid-span. 2. To compare the analytical and experimental values of strain within the beam. 3 to use the measured deflections and theory to evaluate the Young's modulus of the material and 4. to note the source of errors in a typical simply supported beam experiment. For this lab, a test frame with a maximum capacity of 2000 newtons is used. Within the test frame, an I-beam is supported at each end, i.e. simply supported, and a point load is applied at mid-span using a hand-operated jack. The readings for force, measured in newtons, strain, measured in microstrain, and displacement, measured in millimetres, are captured using the System 6000 data acquisition system. The various values are displayed in real time on the PC monitor. The load being applied is measured with a load cell. This is located above the jack. There are five strain gauges placed on the vertical centre line of the I-beam. String gauges are foil gauges directly bonded to the side of a structure. The electrical resistance of the foil changes as it is extended or compressed, and this measured change in resistance is related to the change in length of the gauge. For these strain gauges, a positive value of strain indicates tension, whilst a negative value indicates compression. Their locations are as follows. The vertical displacement of the beam at mid-span is measured using a Linear Variable Displacement Transducer, or LVDT. A dial gauge may also be used for this purpose. To start the experiment, the cross-sectional dimensions of the I-beam, as well as the length of the beam between supports, known as the span, must be known. These values have been measured and are as follows. Also please note the support conditions. The aforementioned sensors and data acquisition system are then checked. The force, strain values and displacement are zeroed on the system prior to loading. The beam is then gently loaded in increments of 200 newtons up to a maximum of 2000 newtons. We pause to record the deflection and strain values at each increment of loading. You will observe that, as expected, the strain values for gauges 1 and 2 display negative values. This is because they are in a region experiencing compression. Conversely, gauges 4 and 5 display positive strain values, as they are in a region experiencing tension. String gauge 3 displays zero, or close to zero, strain. This indicates that it lies on, or near to the neutral axis of the structure.
Upon reaching the maximum force of 2000 newtons, the beam is then unloaded. This is again completed in increments of 200 newtons. Deflection and strain values are also recorded at each step. A set of results for this experiment has been uploaded in Excel format to the Civil Engineering Mini site. Please follow this link to access the data. You should download a copy of the data for use in calculating the results required for this report. The report consists of three parts. Part 1. Draw the bending moment and shear force diagrams for the beam at maximum force applied, F max. Part 2. Beam deflection. Plot a graph of load on the y-axis versus deflection on the x-axis for the loading and unloading cycles. Comment on the linearity of the curve. Compute the theoretical slope and compare with the Young's modulus for steel. Calculate the theoretical beam displacement at midspan from the following formula and compare this to the experimental value. Comment on the results. Part 3. Bending stress distribution. Plot the strain profile at midspan using the strain gauge readings at maximum applied load, F max. Calculate the stress at the strain gauge locations and plot the bending stress profile of the beam under maximum applied load. Compare the theoretical and experimental values of stress at the strain gauge locations for the maximum load value. Finally, comment on the results. Your course lecturer will inform you as to how you can submit your report in the coming weeks. Best of luck, and we hope to see you in the labs again soon.